my name is Lucy from Made by Lucy and welcome to my channel here on YouTube. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this rather cute and super practical wrist pin cushion. Now if you're anything like me, I have pin cushions dotted all over my sewing space but I never have the pin cushion with the pins in when I need it. They're always on the one over on the other workbench or by my sewing machine. So I've been meaning to make one of these for a long time and now I have, I am super chuffed with it and I want to share the tutorial with you guys. So enjoy, have a go and here's what you're going to need. First of all you're going to need to get yourself some measuring equipment, a tape measure and a ruler is really useful. Something to mark on your fabric, either an erasable pen, a pencil, a tailor's chalk or a normal pen is fine for this project. You're going to need some cutting equipment, either a rotary cutter or some scissors or both. And then you're going to need to find yourself a piece of fabric to use to make your pincushion. Now I'm using a remnant here of some fabric that I've used previously. It's a really strong cotton canvas fabric which is perfect. It's nice and hard wearing to help you make your pincushion. You're going to need some elastic that fits around your wrist. Um, fairly tightly so only a small amount this one is three quarters of an inch elastic but on this previous one that I've made I've got um, one and a half inch elastic so whatever you have to hand in your stash will be absolutely fine and then for the templates we're going to be measuring out one long strip of fabric to go around the edge of our pin cushion here and two circles one for the top and one for the bottom so for the circles they need to be roughly about 10 centimeters in diameter i found this old tin lid which is perfect size it's 10 centimeters but if you haven't got one of those you can equally really easily make your own circle using a pencil and a piece of string um, and, and draw a circle around. You need to find yourself a piece of scrap cardboard. This is a piece of cardboard off of a ribbon reel that I had spare. I'm going to use, make sure this is um, about the size of your circle, so 10 centimetres. And you're going to need some stuffing to put inside of your pin cushion. I've just used um, some scraps of batting in this one here, but wire wool would also be really, really good because it will sharpen your pins as you push them in. Now we're ready to start. Let's cut out our fabrics. So you should end up with one long rectangle fabric, which is six centimeters by 35, and two circular shapes of fabric, which are roughly 10 centimeters in diameter across. Also just trim your cardboard down to the same size or slightly smaller in fact than one of your circles. You also want to measure now up your elastic for your wrist so to do this what I'm going to do is I'm just going to overlap my elastic at the back just slightly and just pull it in slightly so it's quite tight on my wrist but I can still get it on and off. You want it fairly tight so that your pin cushion doesn't slip and slide around your wrist. And once you've got that measurement, you want to leave yourself a good inch overlapping. Keep your finger there and then just give it a snip. And that's everything you need. Okay, so the first step to our sewing process that we're going to follow is we want to sew our elastic. So you want to put your elastic around your wrist pulling it slightly so it's slightly tighter and then once you've got um, your elastic to the right tightness that you want just keep hold of it there and pull it off of your hands keeping hold pop a clip or a pin on there to hold that in place and just want to pop a stitch across there somewhere to hold that in position so that's your first step Okay, so I've just moved you across to my sewing space. So first of all, all I've done is just sewn two lines of stitching across my elastic there to hold that together in place. And I've overlapped it about one inch there, you can see, maybe a little bit more. Just test that goes on your wrist still, and it's fairly tight. You don't want it too tight that it's gonna hurt, but you want it so it stops it from sliding around too much because the pincushion is quite heavy. And then once you're happy with that, we want to then attach this little elastic wristband to one of our outer circles. Pop your 
piece of elastic at the bottom there that you have joined on the centre of one of your circles. And then we want to sew this elastic wristband to that circle. So this is the tricky bit. You need to get your sewing machine sort of inside of your elastic wristband here. So just take your time. Um, keep your elastic out the way so pull it out the way and you want to sew a good sort of square and maybe with a cross through the middle as well to give it extra strength and make sure that that doesn't come off over time we go so that is my wristband now stitched on to one of my fabric circles nice and firmly so just make sure you're happy with how that is stitched on trim off all of your threads that might be hanging off here and then we're ready to pin this in place to our outer piece of fabric so you now want to get your outer piece of fabric and then in fact I'm going to start with the other circle. I'm going to put this one to the side a moment. You then want to attach your long rectangular fabric all the way around the edge of the top of your pin cushion which is this one here without your wrist strap on. So start somewhere, it doesn't really matter, along your fabric. Plenty of pins here to keep this in place. Right sides are facing and you gradually want to move the straight edge around the curved edge of your pin cushion. So just make sure you put plenty of pins in. It's easier to use pins here rather than clips because the clips tend to get in the way where it's quite small when you've got it under the sewing machine, whereas pins are a bit flatter. And then when you get nearly to the end of the one of the lengths of your um, rectangular fabric, you want to then fold that back on itself. So when you've got about an inch left, fold that back on itself so that it gives you a nice clean edge um, on the outside here. So I'm just going to move my pins to hold that folded piece down. And then I'm going to go to the other side and carry on pinning around to meet it. And then when you get to the piece where you've got the folded edge here, you want to lay this other end all the way across it so not folding it back on itself just laying it over that piece that we've just folded down so I'm just going to move these pins now to encase all of those fabrics together like so Okay, so that's now attached. Now you want to sew all the way around here and with a straight stitch, following about a centimetre seam allowance, don't have to be too accurate. I'm going to start just the other side of my open ends. The reason I'm going to do that and not start on my open ends is because when I get all the way around, if I've got any excess fabric, I can move that across a bit more. So I'm just going to start the other side of those open ends that I folded over. And just take your time, taking your pins out as you go. You want to do a back stitch when you start and when you finish. And you just want to take your time and make sure you lay your fabric nice and flat as you sew around and over it. You want to sew as close to your pins as you can before you pull them out so your fabric stays in position.
So as I get up to the opening here where I've got the folded fabric, I'm just gonna make sure it all stays nice and flat and flush on top of each other. Just easing that around the circle still until I come back to where I started stitching and then I'm gonna do a back stitch. off my threads as I go okay so you should now have that attached so just to show you, you don't need to turn it in the right way but just to show you what you should now have you should have now attached one of your circular pieces to these side pieces to the side strip and where the opening is that one bit folded over gives you that nice clean edge that we're going to stitch up by hand when we finish so popping it back in the wrong way. What you also might wanna do is just snip some little snips all the way around the circular edge, the seam allowance here, so that when you turn it in the right way, it lays nice and flat. Just a few, probably about centimetre, centimetre and a half apart. Watching out you don't snip through your stitches and watching out that you don't snip any of the fabric um, from the side edges or the circle. Okay. okay so now what we want to do is we just want to secure this opening here so we don't want to stitch it up because that's where we're going to stuff our pin cushion but we want to lay it nice and flat so keeping our circle here on the open edge keep that side up nice and flat and then I'm going to just pop a pin or a clip I'm going to use a clip in fact and I'm just going to stitch along this top edge here where I've popped that clip just to hold that opening in place. So just quite close to the edge, a straight stitch. Okay so as you can see, I don't know if you can quite see that, I've just stitched along that side piece that I've still got my opening. Okay, so next step is to now attach our other circle, the one that we've got our elastic wristband on, to this opening here. So exactly like we've just done, it doesn't matter where it's positioned. So you just need to pop that on and follow the edges around, pinning as you go again. that your circle doesn't quite fit and you've got some excess fabric just move it up from the side slightly so as you can see mine's just poking out around the top just to move the circle out to fit this side bit now we want to stitch all the way around here to stitch this one on as well remembering we still got our opening here to turn it in the right way and to stuff it so following your one centimetre seam allowance, we don't need to worry about where we start now because our opening has already been sewn into place. Trying to keep your fabric nice and smooth. Back stitch when you start and back stitch when you finish. Once you've sewn it on, just double check that you've caught your fabric both top and bottom. Give it a trim if you need to and then you might want to snip up to your stitch line again round the circle so it lays nice and flat. Just be careful not to cut through your stitches or your fabric below. If you do accidentally cut through your stitches, don't panic. Just re-stitch along the section where it's cut through to reinforce it. So once you've done that, I'm just gonna cut off all my threads. You should have this little drum looking shape. You want to find your opening and then you want to pull your um, pin cushion in the right way. This bit is a bit tricky because the opening is quite narrow and small and if you're using a cotton canvas fabric it's quite thick um, and dense so just take your time to push this through. It does take a bit of patience and wiggling around.
there you go. That is the shape of your pin cushion. So before we stuff our pin cushion, we want to add our little cardboard circle. Now, the only reason mine's got a hole in is because it's a ribbon um, holder. So just ignore that. It doesn't need to have a hole in the middle. It's just what I had to hand. But this is just really to reinforce the bottom of your pin cushion and give a bit of protection to your wrist for when you're putting your pins in, even though the pin cushion is quite deep. So the chances of it going right down unless they're pushed is, is quite small. So to get this in, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll this piece of cardboard up. It doesn't matter about it creasing. And I'm going to pop that in that opening there, slide that in. Get that all the way in. So this is what needs to be slightly smaller than your circle that you've cut for your fabrics. And then just try and lay that out as flat as you can on the bottom of your pin cushion with your finger. So just popping your finger into the opening there as best you can. The stuffing will push it down again for you afterwards. So once you've got your piece of cardboard in the bottom, you can kind of feel if it's the right size roughly. Again, don't panic too much. If it's a little bit bigger, the sides will just curl up at the edge and then you want to stuff it. So the stuffing can be a little bit awkward as well because the whole, the gap is quite narrow. Um, so you might want to use a chopstick or something similar to help you push that in. I'm gonna use wadding or batting um, to stuff mine again, but you can use whatever you want to. So you want to break off your stuffing or wadding, whatever you're using, into little chunks and you want to feed that through your opening in your pin cushion, keeping the cardboard to the bottom. And you want to fill it quite snug so that your pin cushion is nice and compacted. So get in as much as you can. There we go. Once your pincushion feels nice and compact and nice and full, getting as much as you can, you can sort of shape it back up so it's that nice circular shape again. The last thing to do to finish your pincushion off is to now stitch up this little opening that we've left here, so this folded edge. And I'm simply gonna sew that by hand, either a slip stitch or just a little over stitch as well. This one here, I've just done a little over stitch. You can barely see it if you use the thread the same colour as your fabric and that will finish your pin cushion off. So we're just going to do that by hand. There we go, your pin cushion is complete. Now all you need to do is think up your next sewing project and enjoy. Thanks so much for watching this mini tutorial. I hope you enjoy making your very own wrist pin cushion. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more mini tutorials and see what I'm getting up to in my sewing journey. Until next time, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon, bye.